So in the previous video, we created a smart contract, a very simple one where we are able to add data and we are able to get data. But we want to add some features to it. The first feature I want is to destroy the smart contract. So can we do that? Let's try. So what I will do here is, in fact, we'll, let's not do that in the same code because again, when we deploy that, it will give you some error. So what we will do is we'll create a different smart contract. We'll say second contract. I know that sounds weird, but <laughs> let's do that. So I will just right click here, or maybe I where to right click it, uh, here. So I will say create contract and again, C sharp, the contract name is second. Okay, this is our contract, but then we don't want this code exactly. So I will just go for the first contract, copy and paste it here. The changes we want to make here is this is the namespace of second. This is the contract, which is second. Now, when you do this type of changes, one thing to remember is you have to also delete. So can you see that we got two contracts here? And in the second one, again, in the, we have a test folder. Right click, delete. Don't do that in the production environment. And the next thing you need to do is in this particular file, delete this line as well, which is looking for the test folder. And that's it. Close this, close this one. We got our contract ready. Let's see if the contract is ready. Where is the contract? It's here. Okay, now what are the things we need to do here? Uh, we need to add a method which is destroy. So I will say public static void destroy. Now, how do we destroy a contract? It's very simple. There is a class called contract management and it has a method called destroy. That's it. It's that simple, right? Now, there's one problem here. We can destroy the contract, of course, but then who will destroy it? Who has the power to destroy the contract? So how do we check the owner of the contract? That's important, right? Only owner can delete that. Uh, so first, the condition is we need to find the owner of a contract and we have to check who is trying to delete this contract and then we should be able to do that. So we can apply a if condition to check for the owner. But the question is, how will you check for the owner? To do that, it's very simple. First, we have to define who is the owner of this contract. So we can do it here. So I can say I can create a variable or a property you can say, and I want this property to be only read only because no one can no, no one should be able to change it. So I'll say read only property. And the type of this property I want it to be u int 16 or 64 should be good. Or maybe it will be a longer value, right? So you know uh, in Neo, the private key or the address is of hash 160. So to accommodate that, we can use this type of data, this type of data type, which is u int 160, and you can mention it's the owner is equal to. Now, how do you assign the owner? To assign that, actually, we can say default here because we can pass the value with the help of the marker. So we can do that here. So in the square bracket, you can say initial value, and in the bracket, you can mention the address, and then you can also mention the type of the address. So the address is hash 160. So the type of the parameter is hash 160. That's done. But then we have not assigned the type yet. But then we have not assigned the address yet. So we'll do that in some time. So let's assign the address. Now, where do we get the address? So who is the owner? So I can say Naveen is the owner. So I can just click on uh, this M3 and click on Naveen here. And this is the address of Naveen. Copy this and go back to the smart contract and paste. That's my address. Now, if you use any other address and if you try to run this code, it will give you error. So please use your own address and otherwise it will not work. So what we can do here is in this if condition, we can check if it is the owner. And to do that, we can also create one more method here. So I can say public static boolean and this will return if that's the owner or not. So I can say is owner and we can create a Lambda function. This is what you call it in uh, Java. I'm not sure what do you call it in C Sharp, but uh, we can use a shortcut. You can say is owner and it should only check if that's the owner or not. And to do that, we have some inbuilt functions as well to check if the calling person or the signature is of the owner or not. And we can do that with the help of runtime dot check witness. In the bracket, you can mention owner. Okay. And that's the problem, you know, when you switch between multiple languages, you get confused with the standards which, they, which a programming language follows. Okay, so basically for destroying, we are first checking if it is the owner. So here, we can say if it is not the owner, then we can throw an exception. So I can say throw new exception and you can say not allowed. Of course, right, only owner can delete, destroy the smart contract. In fact, we can also verify whoever is calling it is actually the actual owner. 
So I can say public static bool, and we can define a method called verify to do that. And this will only check if that's the owner. We could have simply called owner is owner and that should work, right? Let's say this is is owner. Okay, so we, we have added some methods and this should work now. I don't see any problem in this code. So we are trying to destroy, we are checking for who is the owner. And we, maybe we can also try it with Kiran uh, calling the smart contract. Let's, let's try. So first of all, it's time to uh, build this. So I will say run build task. I want to build the second smart contract. Okay, it says there's a problem. Okay, namespace. Oh, I forgot the most important part. This all should be a part of a class. How can I forget that? My bad. Okay, now let's try once again. Let's run and second build. Okay, this time build. Okay, there's an, another error. I thought it will be completed. It says contract parameter type does not exist in the current context. So let me add this smart contract separately. It was not there. And let me just run this code. Okay, so the problem was we have to add extra library here to make it work. I guess we did that only with these namespace, right? Okay, my bad. Cool, so once we have this up and running, build is done, it's time to deploy it. It's very simple, just right click here and say deploy the contract. Uh, who will be deploying it? Who is the owner? It's Naveen, second contract, and it's taking some time to deploy. I hope it will not be giving any error. Okay, it seems it is deployed. Now it's time to invoke it. So click on invoke contract, which one we want to invoke. We want to invoke the second one. So we'll not be adding and get data this time. We'll simply say, uh, well, let's verify who is the owner. So we'll click on verify. Uh, we are calling this verify and run this step. So who is running this? I will say Naveen, call by entry. So it should say true. There's a test here because Naveen is the owner. Click on this and can you see that we got true? That means it is true. So we, we are actually verifying who is the owner. And now let me run this with the help of a different user, Kiran called by entry, because Kiran has a different address, right? So when I say, okay, it's just saying pending, we'll wait for some time. And done, when you click on this one, uh, you can see we got false. So basically that's how you can verify the owner. Uh, we can perform other options as well. You can just write out in your machine. You can again add data, you can get data, you can say is owner. And that's how you try out different smart contract. So just to reiterate what we have done till now. So basically we, if you want to check for the owner, we can use we can get any function that doesn't matter, but we can check the witness, right? Which is the owner in this case. And then we have to we can set the address as well here. And if we change this address for a different user, that, that user becomes the owner. Okay, that's it. This is how you uh, create a smart contract and you add extra features. So if you have any more questions, let me in the comment section and do subscribe for other videos. Bye-bye everyone.